Ragnarok has come and the end of the world is upon us. We're Viking and now let's play Blood Rage. Blood Rage! Welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name is Jimmy. I'm Rod. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, click the button and every single Thursday you will be notified of a brand new video. This week's video is Blood, Blood Rage. Rage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a Viking game. We get yeah. to be a Viking clan. Ragnarok has come, the world is ending, and we are fighting it out. Exactly, battling it out. Battling it out over three ages. Right. Now, before we get into how to play the game, what the game is about, whether we love it or hate it, we are going to tell you right at the beginning. What it is, well, how we rate it. This is how we rate games yeah. on our channel, is we give you a simple buy it, play it, hate it rating. And so it's really simple. Green means go buy this game and add it to your collection. White means maybe you wouldn't buy it, but you definitely play it. And then red means you hate this game and you wouldn't play it and you wouldn't buy it. Now we're gonna give you our rating of this game and then we're gonna spend the rest of this video telling you why we gave it that rating. Okay, let's do it. And, and over. Oh! oh, we got a white. Get a white. We got a white and a yeah. green. Got so. a white and a green. <laughs> Ah, okay, so we're gonna spend the rest of this video talking about why. Sure. So um, the first thing we need to talk about are the components with this game. Sure, a million components. But -da. they look fantastic. But -da. I mean, the miniatures are stuff that I would buy individually. <laughs> you know, so if I was over at a shop and I saw these miniatures for sale for you know seven bucks, six bucks a piece, I'd probably end up buying them to add to my D and D collection. <laughs> I think they're incredible. Yeah. I think just the quality of what you get. Yeah. I've seen these painted before and they look phenomenal. They do. It's just, I mean, the map board's excellent. Mm -hmm. I, I just really can't uh, you know, hit it on anything when it comes to the art and the pieces themselves. Well, yeah, that's like, my only thing. Yeah. The player boards are kind of wimpy. Yeah. But that's, I mean, if that's the only thing I can think of. Hey, not bad. That they skimped on, yeah. I, I guess that's okay. All right, so let's tell you how to play the game so you can figure out if this is something that would work for you and your gaming group. Each person gets a clan and you set up your board. There is a starting amount of rage that you get in this right. game. And rage is what you use to take actions on every single turn. So when you're out of rage, you can't do anything else. Now, there are some things that you can do in the game that don't take any actions at all, or doesn't take any rage, but you can't do those things if you've already spent all of your rage. So it puts you into this kind of mode of what do I want to do and when do I want to do it? Right. So you do an action and then it moves to the next player's turn and then they do an action. It keeps going around the board until either everybody has passes or ev everybody has passed or everybody is out of rage. Right. So what can you do on a turn? First thing that you can do is you can uh, put somebody out onto the board. And so you could send one of your warriors out onto the board. And this costs you a value. So a regular warrior costs you one rage. And so then you'd move your rage token down. If you want to send out your leader, um, then you can send him out. Or where's my leader? There's my leader. But he doesn't cost any rage. Right. So that's pretty cool. But your leader is worth more value than the other dudes. Right. Um, if you want to send out a monster, maybe if you collect a monster during the game, then that might cost you so much rage to put out there. Um, then you can march, which march means that you get, get to move guys from one location on the board to another. Blood Rage is an area control game. So you are trying to move your dudes over into this area, pillage it, and then you get a resource. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Right. But um, so another thing that you can do is move over. You can pillage for free. So basically the way that that works is I have my guys here and I say, Everybody, I'm pillaging this place right here, whatever that Viking word is that I can't say. <laughs> And so there are these little uh, locations on here. And so this location in, in particular has two open spaces on it. And so somebody else from a neighboring location, so they have to be next to it, could say, okay, I'm going to move in a guy. And then the next person has an opportunity and they can move in a guy. Once it's full, once nobody else can invade or if nobody else wants to invade, right. then you do this battle sequence. Sure. And so battling is pretty simple. You just count up the value of all the people that you have in there. And then everybody gets to play a battle battle card and uh, whoever has the highest value after all of that takes place wins. Everybody that was in there that lost goes to Valhalla, their people are taken off the board, they're dead. Right. Um, so how do you get these cards? At the beginning of every single round you're going to get the God's Gifts. And so this is done in a drafting mechanic. So there are a certain number of cards that are put out. Everybody gets cards and just like Seven Wonders or any other drafting game, you pick a card 
pass the stack to the next yeah. person. They take it, they pick a card, pass it around. So you're gonna do this until you have six cards, and then these are the cards that you are going to be using during the game. So, like I said, these could be battle cards that you could use during a battle. They could also be upgrade cards that you could place down onto your board that could upgrade your leader, your warrior, your clan, your boat, your monster. Or they can be, um, I forget what they're called, destiny cards maybe? Um, uh, quest cards, I'm right. sorry. So then you have these quest cards that you can play. And quests could be anything like uh, have the most people in the blue section of the board or have the most people in the yellow section or right. uh, send four people to Valhalla on this turn. There's all kinds of different quests that you could do or um, you know just different things that you could do during the game. And at the end of an age, you reveal the completed quests that you did and you get glory for that. Right. Now, I forgot to mention every time you win a battle, you're also going to get glory for that. So just going up the tracker as we're doing all this. Like a Ticket to Ride or exactly. one of those old school games where you're moving up the side of the board, you do that. Yeah. Now the other thing that you can get, what are you fighting over in each one of these locations? You are fighting to upgrade your character board. So you have these three tracks on your board that you can upgrade. You can upgrade the amount of rage that you have. Um, you can upgrade how many uh, how much glory you get for winning a battle, right? That's awesome. And then you can upgrade how many men that you can have on the map. So you have all these dudes off to the side to begin with, but to start, you can only have four dudes on the map. That's it. Right. So if you win the location that has the horns, then that means that now I could move up and now I could have seven dudes on the map. It means you're That's a whole big difference. Yeah, and you're a whole lot more powerful yeah. that way. Um, there are also the monsters in the game that you could recruit by cards. And so once you recruit this guy, you put a little base on him, and now he's mine for the rest of the game. Right. So even if you kill him, send him to Valhalla, he's going to come back to me. Um, and so you're going to be doing that fighting over these locations. At the end of the age, all of these get flipped back over so you know what's there. Right. So you know which location you might want to go to to get that resource again. Right. Um, and so at the end of every age, you're going to take one of these, which is a destruction. Ragnarok is yep. destroying. And then this destroys, like this exact location here gets destroyed on this round. And any dudes that were on it go away to Valhalla. Oh, dead. Um, at the end, after you've destroyed this, after you've done your quest, you release all these dudes, they go back to their owners, and then you start another round. You get new cards, which are more powerful and stronger, and you do that whole thing again. Now, since you're destroying a new location, every single round, the board gets smaller and tighter mm -hmm. and more opportunity for conflicts and bad things to happen. So sure. that uh, progresses over three rounds. At the end of three rounds, uh, it's done. It plays really close to that 60 maybe 90 minutes once oh, yeah. you know how to do it. Right. All right. So All right. tell us why. Why'd you give it well, away? <laughs> let me tell what I liked about it. This okay. Real quick. So, of course, the look of the game is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I like the theme. It's oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I like pretty much everything about the game. The only problem I have, and it's enough of a problem to knock it to a, I'll play the game. So I'm not saying I won't play because it, it is fun. But it just seems like this is a card game with a board and some miniatures. Mm -hmm. So the cards are everything. Right. Yeah. It's, they're super strong. There's crazy cards in there. And it just seems that there's some OP cards in there for, my, <laughs> for, for the way I think of it. Right. Um, some craziness with what you can do with the cards where you may... It, it, it takes away some of the strategy part of it and then it takes it back to luck. And so mm -hmm. that, that, that's some things because, I mean... That's some things that bother me about it. It just seems like when it comes to it's, it's a mm -hmm. card game, it seems that the cards play too much of a factor. I would like to have seen a board game utilizing the cards within the board game. Right. I think that's why um, you have the option to not draft at the beginning, but that's right. why I think the draft is so important. But I totally get what right. you mean, right. that on a turn, you could load your place up with all these dudes and think you're going to win it, and homeboy plays a card that says you got to get rid of everybody but one. Right. You know, and then or how do? about the card that says same same thing? You load it up. You've got the cards to do the battle, but he has the card that says mine is plus one over the highest number of you know whoever has the highest number of attack. <laughs> like you know, it's like crazy. It's, it's a just, trump card. Yeah. It's exactly. And, uh, <laughs> that's so, not good. <laughs> so that's that for me killed it in the sense that. For me to yell out and tell everybody to buy it, I can't do that, but I definitely will play it. For me, I think, so the plus is obviously we raved about the miniatures, sure. right? That, that is incredible. I loved, 
I actually, I'm kind of on the fence too because I totally understand yeah. what you mean. That was going to be my same complaint on uh -huh. this game was that the cards feel swingy on it. But I think the more that you play it, the more that those decisions you make on right. what to get and what to send on become incredibly important. Right. Which makes a lot more tension as opposed to just what am I dealt, you know? Because right. I think if that's what it was, then I think you just have this hand and you're like, well, you beat me because you got the better ones. But I think then on a turn, if you're saying there's four of us, you know, right. what do I want to pass on and what's going to make it back to me? Right. I think that kind of added some to it. I like that the board got smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I when, lot. when I heard that that's what it was, that the board gets smaller, I thought it would be more than what it was. Okay. I felt like it was, I felt like it would get really tight. Right. Whereas it only gets, you know, two or three tighter, sure. you know, but I did still like that because I felt like it took away something. And then if sure. it took away, because you can see what it is, right. then you know what resource, right. that resource is going away and sure. around. You know, you better get there and pillage for that if right. you want to get it to increase that. Now, I love the fact that they had the lands getting destroyed, but mm -hmm. that was really neat. Um, the map board, um, I guess... Is a little small because you can move to any location or when you march, right? Yeah. Which is which was a little weird for me. I didn't expect to be able to move here to here within one turn or whatever. But anyway, the, 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 like I said, my biggest complaint is just the fact that the cards seemed a little bit overpowered. Um, I liked how in here in Egrasil that you could put as many people as you wanted. Yeah, you know, so it ended up being this massive battle. Sure, you know when uh, when you wanted to do something here because you just loaded up, and then this gave you access if you needed to march to go anywhere. Well, something some another good point on this game is that you don't know the quest that somebody laid down. Right. right, and so the quest might be send so many people to Valhalla. So some guy goes in to start this battle right. in Igrasil, and he has no plans to win it. Right, and I thought that that was cool. I thought that your motives for doing something could be totally different sure. than somebody else. Now, th the only thing that, and they even say this in the rules, the the surefire way to lose this game is to not fight. Right. And so they encourage that. And I don't know. There's something about blood rage that if you try right. to go the peaceful route. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It just wouldn't happen, you know. Right. And so you can try to do quests, but ultimately you cannot ignore people getting these tokens because it bumps up each one of these tracks. Sure. And if you let somebody get to these other tracks, they could score up to 60 extra glory if they bump all these tracks right. up all the way. Right. Um, now you can get extra glory different ways. If you complete some quests, it says bump up something. So you you don't have to get glory just by getting these tokens, but it is kind of cool that you can't let people do whatever they want. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So that is our review of Blood Rage. Right. Rod says play it. I say <laughs> buy it. <laughs> and uh, there you go. So thanks for watching the Board Game Closet. We got a lot more reviews on our website, BoardGameCloset.com. We've got a podcast that comes out every single Tuesday. So make sure that you check that out. And as always, support your local hobby shop. Do it. All right. <laughs>